With modern science, we have found a way of using magnets to shut off portions of a normal man's brain and turn him, at least temporarily, into a psychopath. This is truly terrifying and yet fascinating at the same time. Knowing how a psychopath thinks is the holy grail of psychology. In the words of Dr. Kent Peel, the first time I saw a brain scan of a psychopath, I thought to myself, this is the most abnormal brain I have ever seen. But since then, I have looked at more scans and realized that this was just the tip of the iceberg. If I were to ask you to picture a psychopath, you would most likely think of a man like Jared Murray, a man who believed that it was fate that he would ask his friend and flatmate for a lift to Walmart. And as a passenger, they flew down an old logging road where Jared once again felt it was fate as to what would happen next. So he took you to Walmart? Yes, sir. And did you both go in? No, we did not go in, sir. And why not? We pulled into the parking lot, then I pulled the uh, weapon on him and demanded that he take me to Asher, Oklahoma, sir. Okay, and why did all of a sudden did you decide that you need to go to Asher? Because I was planning to take him out into the country and kill him. To answer so politely and yet so coldly, we'd all agree that this man is a psychopath. This state even went out of their way to remove the innocent by reason of insanity for psychopathy. Except, there's only one teensy tiny little problem. Jared is not a psychopath. Now I can hear a chorus of excretion as this man it clearly is one, but no. Jared Murray was not diagnosed with psychopathy or antisocial personality disorder, but was rather diagnosed with schizoaffective disorder and was suffering from a bout of psychosis. It's important to note that this is something that is deemed a curable condition, and as such, a doctor at the Oklahoma Forensic Center had actually recommended to the court that Murray was no longer a danger to society and recommended his release after a scant 34 days. Now, a judge ordered a second opinion, and it was determined that Jared was not cured of his ailments. But they all agreed on one important thing. Jared could one day be cured of his ailments. Psychopathy, on the other hand, is deemed incurable. Jared may have possessed some traits of a psychopath, he was impulsive, beaming with self-confidence, and in his own words, he showed resilience. Why did you do it? I guess is what I'm asking. If I'm pressed to answer, I'll say it's to prove the strength of my resolve. He lacked some other important traits that you see in the diagnosed low-functioning psychopaths, such as Ted Bundy. For you see, Bundy was charismatic and manipulative, two very important characteristics of a psychopath. As Dr. Kevin Dutton correctly points out, well, generally, uh, when you meet a psychopath, they're very charming. They're very charismatic. They do tend to have a definite aura. You've a keen ear and noticed I said low-functioning psychopath. And that was no mistake, for contrary to popular belief, psychopaths are not just limited to the criminal crowd, but are rather on a spectrum. The top fields that psychopaths find themselves dominating in are CEO, lawyers, special forces, and doctor. Just listen to the words of one of the UK's top brain surgeons when describing his mindset during surgery. A neurosurgeon uh, who's basically um, been uh, performing surgery for, uh, for over 20 years. And he actually said uh, to me that surgery uh, was a blood sport. Emotions are entropy, and that's seriously bad for business. You can't get through a 20-hour operation if you are emotionally involved. You have to be cold and calculating and to cut with precision. There is a reason we don't allow doctors to operate on family members. It is only when you stop to think for a second do you realize why. For who would you want to operate upon? The surgeon with worry in his heart? Or the emotionless yet confident one? French philosopher Michael Foucault had identified this sentiment as the surgeon's stare, an intense and focused gaze that surgeons adopt during surgery that dissects the patient, not as a human, but rather a thing, a problem that needs to be solved. And that's because during surgery, a surgeon must maintain a high level of focus, precision, and must be able to 
communicate this to the other members of the surgical team, at least if the surgery is to be successful. And you'll notice that I didn't say patient to survive. No, for the patient is secondary. Dr. Paul Babake has long argued that certain psychopathic traits, such as a lack of empathy and a willingness to exploit others for personal gain, may actually be advantageous in corporate settings. This is known as the concept of corporate psychopathy, and with the potential benefits of psychopathic thinking in the corporate world, transcranial magnetic stimulation, or TMS for short, may be able to make a regular man think like a high-functioning psychopath. TMS is a non-invasive technique that uses magnetic fields to either stimulate or inhibit brain activity in specific regions. To continue our quote from Dr. Kent Keel, the brains of psychopaths are fundamentally different from those of normal people, and it's not just to a matter of degree. They're wired differently, and there's a certain part of the brain, the paralimbic system, that seems to be particularly impaired. Part of the paralimbic system, known as the ventral medial prefrontal cortex, has been implicated in psychopathy as it plays a critical role in emotion, decision-making, and social cognition. Damage to this area of the brain can cause adult-onset sociopathy. In the case of psychopaths, it's not damaged or turned off per se, but rather toned down, like a dimmer switch on a light. Um, I talk about psychopathy being on a spectrum, and there's a lot of scientific evidence for that, but there's no doubt whatsoever that people at the sharp end of that, the kind of, I guess you could call Champions League psychopaths, are very, very different uh, from the rest of us. A study by Michael Konix found that patients with damage to the ventral medial prefrontal cortex exhibited utilitarian moral judgments, and that by using TMS, you can temporarily inhibit the prefrontal cortex to manipulate an individual's own moral judgments and induce a more psychopathic-like trait. Another study by Jared Hisser used TMS to temporarily disrupt the activities of the ventral medial prefrontal cortex in healthy participants, and he examined its effects on social behavior. The researchers found that it led to decreased guilt aversion increased cheating behavior, and an increased willingness to harm others for personal gain. It is theorized that by using TMS to manipulate the activity of the ventral medial prefrontal cortex could have practical implications for certain professions, such as the military, or in jobs that require individuals to at least make quick and decisive decisions in high-stress situations. Now, if these individuals were trained to suppress emotions and engage in a more utilitarian decision-making through TMS-induced paralimbic inhibition, they might be better equipped to handle those situations. Dr. Kevin Dutton sought to answer that very inquiry. He noted that the amygdala is the brain's emotional control and that in psychopaths, it's not that it's empty but rather the functions similar to a dimmer switch on a light, as stated before. Dr. Ahmed Karin had found that when you turn down the signals on the amygdala using TMS, you can theoretically give someone a psychopathic makeover. This is something that Dr. Leanne Young had demonstrated when researchers applied TMS to the right temporal partial junction, an area of the brain responsible for ascribing intentionality to others' actions. Kevin took these tests a step further and wanted to experience psychopathy, so he rounded up his friend and famous SAS soldier Andy McNabb to pay a visit to Dr. Nick Cooper's lab. And Nick straps the two into an EEG recording equipment to measure their stress levels as they sit in front of a screen that begins with soothing music. Initially, their readings are way higher than their resting levels in anticipation of what is to come. Nick flips a switch. And the screen switches scenes in an instant to scenes of gore, torture, and execution, so vivid that Andy even admitted that he was able to smell the sickly sweet smell of blood. While Kevin was seen to have a normal reaction, Andy's was interesting. His pulse began to slow to the point that it was below his baseline. It is almost like he was gearing himself up for the challenge. And then when presented, his brain suddenly responded by injecting liquid nitrogen into his veins. 
It is a sharp contrast to Kevin, who feels sick and jittery just from the experience. But it does leave Kevin interested. Could he think and react the same as Andy if Nick were to shut down the same parts of his brain that Leanne, Ahmed, Jared, and Coings did? The result lasted a mere 20 minutes. Dr. Kevin Dutton describes the experience as not too dissimilar to an alcoholic buzz, an easy, airy confidence, a transcendual loosening of inhibition, the stirrings of a subjective moral swagger, and the encroaching and somehow strangely spiritual realization that who cares anyways? Except it had one major difference. There is no sluggishness but rather an enhancement of attentional acuity and sharpness and awareness. When subjected to these images and sirens again, Kevin couldn't suppress a smile, and his readings ran below his baseline, despite just in a short time before he was feeling sick from the same stimulus. When they went out to town in New York, Kevin ended up stealing a waiter's tip, not caring, and he found himself gambling on a machine, getting all the way to the $100,000 question of a who wants to be a millionaire game, before losing it all as he refused to go 50-50. For 20 solid minutes, Dr. Kevin Dutton became a psychopath before his brain realized something was wrong and rewired itself back to normal. The experiment opens up the question, if we can make... A normal man a psychopath by turning sections of the brain off. What would happen if we took a psychopath and turned them on? If you're interested in cases like this, you need to check out the case of Mr. Off. And these videos take forever to make, so if you guys are interested in helping support the channel, then there is a Patreon link that you can go to in the description and any help will be appreciated.